Well, Razorback fans, it is game day eve, Arkansas and South Carolina in Fayetteville tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. And we're going to get into our final predictions, what we think is going to happen, which I'm sure they're going to be 100% true. And I'm always right, just like last week, Cincinnati game. Ah, screw it. Let's just go ahead and dive into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Head over to Bet Online where the game starts. Hopefully, everybody's having a wonderful Friday. So again, we finally have made it to the weekend, game day eve, however you want to put it. And uh, it's exciting times, especially if you're a Razorback fan right now, getting ready for this game. And I yesterday on the podcast, I talked about some of the things that I believe, uh, or the reasons I should say, of why I believe Arkansas was going to win. And I still think Arkansas is going to win, and we're going to give our my final predictions and, and everything too. But um. I started thinking about specifics with my predictions and why I think not only Arkansas will do it, but why Arkansas will be effective at it and why it'll be the difference in this game and why Arkansas wins. So the first reason I believe Arkansas is going to, well, I shouldn't say the reason I'm going to believe. I keep getting mixed up from yesterday. I, it's kind of close to it. So what I predict is going to happen in this game. How about that? We'll do that. We'll start off with starting the game fast. Now, I said this last week that I really wanted Arkansas to do it. And it's not that they started slow, but they certainly didn't start fast either. They kind of eased into it a little bit. And I think you got to give some credit to Cincinnati in that regard. Uh, but at the end of the half, Arkansas was up 14-0. Uh, they had scored right there before the halftime uh, horn sounded. And so it wasn't fast. It wasn't slow. It was just kind of in the middle. Still ended up winning the game, so had a really good showing there defensively in the first half, and you had a 14-0 lead, and you never looked back. But in this game, I think it's going to change. I think that now that they've gotten that first game out of their system, now that they've gotten to where, not maybe, I don't want to even use the word humbled, because they still won the game, but now that they see, okay, all the stuff that was being talked about with us, all the stuff that was being said about us, you know, we still got a lot of work to do. We're glad we won, but we still got plenty of work to do. We're still going to be motivated. I think that that first game jitter deal is going to get out of their system, and they're really going to put it all together here in the beginning part of this game. Now, offensively is really what I'm talking about more so than defensively, because defensively, you'd love to set the tone, but it kind of just is going to go about how the offense for South Carolina plays and the type of uh, plays that put, they put in. Are they running the ball effectively? Are they passing the ball effectively? Like You're kind of just going with whatever and reacting to whatever South Carolina is doing defensive or offensively. But I'm talking about Arkansas offensively starting fast. There's concerns on defense, there's no doubt. But folks, I don't have any concerns, at least at this point in time, about the offense. K.J. Jefferson's awesome. Rocket Sanders is awesome. You got a couple of other running backs that are perfectly capable. The offensive line is great. Trey Knox is emerging. The wide receivers you have on the outside are per like high caliber SEC guys. What's the weakness on this offense? I know there's a lot of games left. You got 11 regular season games left, and we've only seen one of it. So maybe there's something that some of you will bring up or, or put in the comment section of something that maybe you saw that you took issue with. But for me, I didn't see anything. The only thing I saw was a Razorback football team that went up against another really good team in Cincinnati. And it was a battle of the physicality, and Arkansas came out on top. But there wasn't anything that I saw from the offense where I go, "Oh man, this is if this doesn't get shored up, it's going to be a it's going to be a bad deal for the Razorbacks." No, if anything, I was more motivated and more um, hopeful about the offense after Game One than I was even before the season started. Because again, I saw what Cincinnati was doing defensively, and Arkansas still was able to go out there and get a 100-yard rusher from Rocket Sanders. They were still able to go out there and get four touchdowns from K.J. Jefferson, three in the air, one on the ground. Uh, they were still able to, to get some push there. I mean, it just – it was exactly what you have wanted to see or just wanted to see for a game like that to start the season. And now, after a week 
of putting it all together and pressure. And I think Arkansas is going to go up against South Carolina defense. That's not going to be as physical. And again, these are just my predictions, not going to be as physical. And so Arkansas is really going to come out swinging. They are going to say, Hey, you know what? We got beat up last week, but this is, this is going to be something to where we're ready for. We're ready for SEC play. We're ready for South Carolina. Yes, it's an 11 a.m. game, but the crowd's going to be into it. They're going to be energized. And I think if Arkansas receives the ball first, they're going to run right down the field. You're going to see KJ and Rocket really set the tone early. You're going to see them getting some uh, big chunk plays, keeping South Carolina on their toes. Who knows? Maybe even hit a big play because we really didn't see that against Cincinnati. Like There's a few decent-sized runs, but – as far as maybe a pass over the top, a uh, big play, maybe something that Kendall Browles has uh, working for him. And depending on what South Carolina comes out in the uh, formation with or in the in the game with, maybe Arkansas says, hey, let's uh, let's go big on the first play. It's still a play action and toss it up to Matt Landers or Jaden Hazelwood or whoever's over there. Let's see what they can do. So maybe that's something that happens. Maybe that's something that they do. But either way, I expect them to really be effective against South Carolina. I think the offensive line, too, even though uh, they, uh, they, they've they gotten a lot of high grades coming into uh, this season, people think really highly of them. I think that they're going to go out and they're going to push South Carolina around. And I don't even think the South Carolina defense is bad. I'm not trying to say that the South Carolina defense is bad. I just think physically, and I'm just talking about physically, I think Arkansas is going to manhandle South Carolina up front. And I think it can be said for the other side of the ball, too, where – Arkansas's defensive front, I'll admit, like some people were commenting earlier this week in, on, on the uh, YouTube page and saying, I don't know what you saw with our defensive line. It still wasn't good. They still couldn't get pressure on the quarterback. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but also that's not always about the defensive line in a lot of cases. I honestly thought the defensive line played better than what I originally thought they would. Like I thought that there was some real positives from that. And they did a good job of stopping the run. They did a, a good job of containing uh, Cincinnati's quarterback, Ben Bryant, from running on third down and seven, you know, and getting the first down, which I know you're going up against a much more athletic quarterback in Spencer Rattler this weekend. But I thought they did a good job of managing that. They did a good job of, of keeping it all in front of them and not letting any big runs happen. Like, I think that they did a really good job, especially in the middle, of keeping it all into the outside. Now, if South Carolina tries to do a lot more on the outside, maybe that'll hurt them. But I thought the defensive front did a really good job. I thought that uh, Drew Sanders was awesome, you know, rushing the quarterback and and doing his thing. I thought that bumper pool was about as solid as you could ask. So I'm talking about the D-line and linebackers. They were pretty good against Cincinnati, and I think that they're going to be even better against South Carolina. The only concern that comes into that, though, is, of course, the playmaking ability and the, the legs of Spencer Rattler. He can make you pay. Maybe on third and seven, He's back there and nobody's open. He takes off running. Is Arkansas going to have enough behind or a spy or whoever to be able to contain Spencer Rattler and keep him from getting those big first downs? That's going to be a big key. And if Arkansas is able to do that, if they can contain Spencer Rattler, I even said it yesterday, there's not going to be a problem there. But I believe that the defensive line for Arkansas is going to do just fine. Uh, I've said it before that the offensive line for South Carolina isn't great. Uh, so, and I'm not saying that because of what I've watched. I'm saying that and basing that off of people I've talked to who cover South Carolina Gamecocks. That's what they've said. So it's not even just like me pulling it out of thin air as well as much as some people like to say. They struggle with the offensive line. Their, their, their physicality is not there. So I think Arkansas's defensive line is really going to cause some problems for them. And so if you have the combo of the offense starting fast, boom, 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 right down the field, 75 yards, touchdown, start the drive, start the game that way. And then on the other side of it, the defense comes alive and really is able to provide pressure or at least be able to have that defensive front stay so strong like they did last week and they do it again this week. Yeah, the secondary could be problematic. Yeah, we don't know about Slusher and Catalan. Yeah, we don't know about that stuff. But I feel like Arkansas's defensive front is going to overcome that. They're going to make Spencer Rattler have to throw on the run every single time, which he can be good at, but I don't think he's a good enough quarterback to do it every single time. And so it's going to end up causing problems for South Carolina in the early part of this game. So starting fast, I believe, is what something that Arkansas is actually going to do in this game and it's going to look good doing it. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest sports uh, league developments like football, 
the game matchups, news and podcasts, including this year's uh, opening week games. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, and boxing and golf. So head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions over at Bet Online, where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the predictions for Arkansas against South Carolina. Um, we talked about starting the game fast and the importance of that. But next, we got to talk about breaking out with KJ Jefferson. Now, KJ is, of course, like as you can tell from my shirt, that I, I want to wear this weekly in showing my support for my QB1. Uh, but KJ had a good game last week. Um, obviously, the... The exchange there that was the fumble was probably uh, the, the worst move. Maybe the sack that he took that was almost a safety wasn't great. So I'm not saying he was perfect, but he was great. He threw for three touchdowns. He rushed for a touchdown. He looked strong. His passing decision-making was solid overall. He may have missed a pass here or there, but he didn't turn the ball over through the air. He didn't throw an interception. And uh, his running ability, of course, was awesome. I think he had over 80 yards in this game, too. So just overall, a great game out of K.J. Jefferson. And I think that he is going to build off of that confidence and be even better this time around. I have always felt like once K KJ's at his best, whenever things, I'm not saying things go bad, but when things are on the line, when Arkansas is like, we got to have this play, we got to have this touchdown, we got to have this drive, we got to make this play, KJ continues to show that he is the guy, that dude, to make those clutch plays and those clutch throws and those clutch decisions, especially late in the game. Now, Arkansas is favored by nine points in this game as of right now. Like it, I think it started at seven and a half or eight, and now it's moved over to nine. And uh, I want to give a shout out to my uh, buddy P. Steves, who actually brought this to my attention. I didn't even realize it when we're talking about spreads and everything. Uh, Arkansas and being in the SEC, Arkansas has not covered an SEC spread of being over a touchdown favorite that's not Missouri since Bobby Petrino. Yeah, I mean, that to me is pretty incredible. But, of course, we know that Arkansas struggled a lot during those times. But even the games previously that Arkansas won under Brett Bielema or even under Sam Pittman, if they've ever had a touchdown favorite, they've not had much success with it, which I guess makes sense because if you think about every SEC game at home or that you were favored in last year was close. Except for like Missouri, you, you you took care of business. But still, this is a pretty high spread for an SEC game. And Arkansas, will they cover the spread? Is that what they're going to do? I think they do. I think they win this game by a couple of possessions, which we'll talk about in the final predictions. But the point is, is that K.J. Jefferson is a guy that where if Arkansas is up by a touchdown early in the fourth quarter, and it's kind of been stalemated a little bit. Neither team has been able to really – take that next step or to make that extra play to really pull each other pull away from the game or to tie the game whatever it is if it's stalemated but you know that your opportunities are running thin i believe kj jefferson's gonna get that ball open that drive and lead him down the field for a much needed touchdown that's just what he does like that's not something you coach that's not something you recruit that's not something you can develop it's just something you have and kj has it and as long as kj is the quarterback I don't see Arkansas ever getting completely shut down offensively for one, but especially late in games when they need the scores, when they need the points, KJ buckling under that pressure. I just don't see it happening. And I don't think it's going to happen in this game against South Carolina either. I think that there's enough there from KJ with the weapons that he has around him to where he's going to be able to make those extraordinary plays and really showcase and build upon what he did last week in this weekend's game. I don't want him running the ball all the time. Like some people were saying about that. I'm just worried about the amount of hits that KJ is taking. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that you don't want KJ to get hit as much if you can avoid it. Like you don't want him getting, whether it's tackled or whether it's, you know, hit after the throw, whatever it is, you want to limit those because you need your guy. You need KJ healthy. You need him not banged up or anything, but I got to tell you, that's KJ's game. Like you can't 
you can't change who KJ is. Now, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite him when he's trying to run the ball or trying, you know, avoid like getting hit or whatever. Like, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully. But I'm not going to sit back and say, well, KJ, you're awesome at throwing. You're awesome at running. You're awesome at doing all these clutch plays. But you, you know what? And when, when you're running the ball, you, you need to get out of bounds or you need to slide. Well, coach, I, I, don't, I don't do that. Like, that's not how I play. I want to go to get the first down. Yeah, I know, but we're going to change that. We're going to do that. We're going to make you to where, uh, you know, you're, you're going to slide five yards short of the first down instead of trying to go and get the first down. Like, that's not how he's wired. That's not how he plays. And so you have to accept it. Again, I'm not wanting him to get hurt. And I don't think anyone's thinking that, like, we're going to, you know, knock on wood that he stays healthy because that's important. But I don't want to change him. I don't want to change his game. I don't want to ask him to do things that he doesn't want to do, especially because that's when he plays his best. He plays in his most comfortability. And think about it from the defensive side, too. Think about it if you're a cornerback or you're a safety or whoever. And the play breaks down and KJ takes off running. If you know as a defensive player that this quarterback that you have in front of you and KJ knows that he slides, knows that he goes out of bounds, all you got to do is just stay in front of him and wait. Just man, okay. I'm in, I'm here, buddy. Go down, or hey, I'm here. Go over to the to, to the out of bounds line. Go go go. Like if you know that, you're gonna approach in a way of like I don't have to tackle the man. I just got to get there and scare him and make him go down. But if you know that you're going up against KJ, where he'll he'll take a hit. He'll to put the hit to you. He'll he'll run you over if you're not careful. He'll do whatever it takes to get that extra yardage and that extra play for that first down. Suddenly, as that cornerback or that safety or whoever, you're changing your whole tune about it. Because once you get there, great. But once you get there, are you going to try to tackle him head on? Because he's going to run you over. KJ's bigger than you. KJ's 6'3", 240 pounds. He's going to run you over. He's probably at least just as fast as you. So he's coming in with a head full of steam. You know he's not going to go down easy. You know he's not going to slide. You know he's not going to try to just run out of bounds as quickly as possible. So what do you do? Exactly. It's the whole threat of it, where the guys that are going to be trying to tackle him don't stop and just say, boo, and he goes down. They're going to have to make a decision. They're going to have to make a business decision. <laughs> do I try to tackle this man that's coming at me like a freight train? Or do I just hope that he goes down? It's a whole mental thing. And, and I think that that's really something that's going to throw off anybody that goes up against KJ. But in this particular case against South Carolina, I think that that's going to be a huge part of his game where he's going to continue to have a breakout game. I think he's going to throw for multiple touchdown passes because I think he's got great wide receivers. I think Trey Knox is really emerging as that guy too. I think that KJ is going to kill him with his legs. You know, he's going to do the RPO with Rocket. I think that there's going to be even times where KJ's back in the pocket waiting to throw and no one's open. So, okay, I'll just run for 10 yards and absolutely, you know, hit stick anybody that comes in my way. And then suddenly everyone's going to think twice about it uh, and doing anything like that. But either way, I believe that KJ is going to go out and have a breakout game. He's going to do even better in this game than he did last game. He's going to improve on those throws that he missed. Uh, I think he's going to make great decisions, and I think he's just going to eat South Carolina alive, especially when he gets down on the run. That's what I believe. Attention cleaning and food service professionals. Brady Industries has been pioneering the way of products and solutions that are delivered to you, the cleaning and food service community, since 1947. Brady is new to the Arkansas community as of 2019, but the company has decades of experience serving over 25,000 customers all over the country. There's one guy you need to call who can take care of all of your food service and janitorial needs. And his name is Aaron Smith. Great Razorback fan and a great guy. From cleaning chemicals to food service and amenity products, Aaron at Brady Industries has what you need. He takes pride in providing exceptional value and service to his customers and offers expertise and innovative solutions to meet even the highest and toughest challenges. So call Aaron and he will get you the best value for your facility and food service budget. You can call Aaron Smith at Brady Industries 501-424-8837, or you can visit supplies.bradyindustries.com to browse all that they have to offer. And if you mention that you heard about Brady Industries on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, Aaron's going to take an additional 15% off because he's just that nice of a guy. So call Aaron Smith, Brady Industries, 
501-424-8837. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment and uh, final little predictions that uh, are going along with Arkansas and what to expect out of this game. The defensive backs are going to show improvement. Now, some of you are probably hearing this or watching this and saying, you're an idiot. How? Based on what logic are they going to show improvement? Because they won't have Catalan or Slusher more than likely. They're two best defensive backs. They got burned a lot of times in, in the secondary, especially at the cornerback position, and those guys are going to be playing once again. How in the world are you going to try to justify the fact that the secondary for Arkansas is going to improve from last week to this week? Well, it's funny you should ask. The reason I believe that they are going to improve, more so than anything, is that Barry Odom is your defensive coordinator. Barry Odom coaches defensive backs well safeties but also you have a really good coach and crack cornerback with Dominic Bowman you don't think that they saw some of the problems that happened on Saturday against Cincinnati you don't think that they know that Catalan and Slusher being out is going to have an impact on them for sure for sure it's tough it's going to be hard at times especially that safety position I mean you lose a preseason all-american it's not easy to just overcome and make it work like it's nobody's business. Like, it's tough. But the thing is, is that they are good coaches. And they are coaches that understand that going up against a team like South Carolina, you're going to have to make the adjustments. You're going to have to find ways to get guys involved, find ways to get guys in better position, find ways to get guys to put down the, the hits when the guys are coming over the middle of the field. Like, you're going to have to find ways to do it. Because Shane Beamer, I assume, is a good coach. You probably watched that game last week against Arkansas and said, ooh, anytime that uh, that guy over there is lined up one-on-one, -on -one, we'll just burn every time. You don't think that he's going to do that too? But I believe in Barry Odom, and I believe in Dominic Bowman, and I believe in their scheme that they're going to be putting together to try to make up for a lot of the mistakes that were made last week. Now, is that going to leave open other opportunities? Because let's be honest, you don't want to go one-on-one -on -one each and every time. Does that mean that they're going to go to zone more? And if they go to zone more, is that going to leave other guys open and other opportunities too? Of course it will. I mean, that's just the way it goes. It's, it's a chess game, essentially. But I believe that the Arkansas is actually going to showcase that, hey, without Catalan, without Slusher, it's big. It sucks. We want them to be in there. We prefer to them to play. But we can still manage. We can still do some good things. I think Hudson Clark and Dwight McLaughlin on the outsides are going to be better. I think that you're going to have some schemes put up to make Spencer Rattler make it really difficult on him. I think that they're going to try to make him throw on the run and all that, which could open up some opportunities for Arkansas to get some interceptions or at least uh, put some pressure on him to make some really tough throws. I just think it's going to be better. Now, that's not to say they won't have breakdowns because, again, it's like, I mean, they're not going to shut out South Carolina. Like they're not going to be perfect. It's just, it's just not going to happen. It's not reality. I'd love it, but they're not. There's going to be some plays here and there where it happens. But overall, I think we're going to see an improvement. And I don't think you're going to see guys getting burned as easily. I don't think you're going to see guys out of position. I think they're going to have a good game plan going into it, and they're really going to showcase how good they are, or at least how they can make up for what happened last week, how they can make up for not having Catalan and Slusher. They got some good dudes that can play. Go out there and play them and see how it goes for them as well. So I think it will be better. And as far as my final predictions go, I said Arkansas was going to win the game. I still believe they're going to win the game, and they're going to win it, honestly, by a couple possessions. I think they cover the spread, as my buddy Pete Steves pointed out, for the first time since the Petrino era. That's not named Missouri. Uh, Arkansas covers the spread, and I think that they win by a final score of 38-24. to 24. I think Arkansas wins by two touchdowns. I think uh, what happens in the game itself is that Arkansas has that touchdown lead. As I was mentioning, early mid-fourth quarter, and they go down the field, they drive it, they score the touchdown, to seal the deal, and they hold off South Carolina, and they end up winning 38-24. Moving to 2-0 and and heading into the Missouri State game next weekend as well. I think the crowd will be electric as well. I know it's an 11 a.m. kick. It sucks, but hey, we're all going to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
And I can't wait to see what Arkansas does against South Carolina this weekend. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.